This is Larry Zerner, Shelley from Friday 13th Part 3, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. All right, we're back, and we welcome Larry Zerner to Without Your Head. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Cool. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. Everybody know it's, uh, I think everyone knows that you're Shelley from Friday 13th Part 3. Does everyone know that? Because I, sometimes I think nobody knows that. <laughs> Do you ever get recognized? Well, I guess on the like computer, it will say Shelley from Friday Thirteenth. So people who click on this interview will know why they're. <laughs> they won't randomly click and go. Why am I hearing this guy? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, uh, John? Oh, I was just wondering. Uh, does anybody like notice you at the supermarket or anything like that? They go, "Hey, it's Shelley." You know, it, it, it really. You know, in the past ten years, I would say almost. Never, unless I'm at a, you know, I, I'm at a convention or something where obviously people are, you know, they, they expect to see me there. They're right. big horror fans. But I was, I went to go see this uh, uh, musical production of um, Jesus Christ Superstar last month. Mm. And it was a big deal. They had, like, the stars from the movie there. And it was an all-star thing. And I'm we had we were sitting, uh, and, and literally Harrison Ford was sitting in front of me, in the seat in front of me. Mm -hmm. And Gina Davis was sitting in the seat behind me. Right? So it was an all-star thing, right? It was like a, full of stars, right? You know, and I'm just there because you know, it's a cherry thing, and I like the show anyway. And after the show, we go to the party, and one of the dancers in the show, he comes up to me and goes, I love fucking <laughs> part three. <laughs> he goes, I saw you from the stage. I said, really? You, you, know, you know, Harrison Ford and Gina Davis were there. He goes, I saw Harrison Ford, not Gina Davis, no, didn't see <laughs> But that was like the one time in ten years that someone has gone up to me, like, you know, in a non-horror uh, place and said, you're Shelly. <laughs> Have any, any clients, um, you know, since you're a lawyer now, anybody ever recognize you from the movie? Well, well, I actually, some, I get clients, you know, some way, like I, I've had clients who... who no, I'm a lawyer, and, and they're fan, you know they need a lawyer, and they're um, they don't know a lawyer, and they they just know I'm a copy, but they hear oh that guy Shelley's a copyright lawyer, so they call me, and and I've had some great clients um, that way, and um, one of my clients is uh, Dan Farrens, who wrote Halloween Six, and uh, the upcoming uh, Girls Next Door, and he wrote the Tooth Fairy that just came out. Anyway, and, and he called me on a on a copyright case. In, we were just talking, and, and, and then at the end of the conversation, he goes, were you in Friday the 13th? <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a big fan boy, and he, you know, he recognized my voice. Yeah, everybody know, uh, you can check out ZernerLaw.com. Yeah. If, uh, if anybody listening has uh, legal needs in the copyright and trademark area, please give me a call. Right. So I guess we, we won't be allowed to sell, like, a, a Shelly T-shirt. <laughs> well... <laughs> You could sell a Shelly T-shirt. I don't think anybody would buy it. It's really the, it's really the issue. I think John has a question. with Paramount more than me. Right. I think John has a question about the Paramount legality. Oh, yeah. I was just wondering what was... Do you know, like, the legality between why Paramount can... Uh, they still release the Friday 13th movies, but uh, New Line owns the Jason character? My understanding is that... Paramount sold to New Line the right to make future Friday the 13th sequels. Mm -hmm. Paramount owns the movies they made, and therefore they put out the box set uh, after the New Line sale, but the box set only included one through eight, the movies that Paramount put out. Um, and But I think that New Line does own the name Friday the 13th now for future events, but they don't use it. And I don't know if that's a, that was an understanding or not, whether the reason since, you know, they, now Jason goes to hell, Freddy vs. Jason, uh, Jason, Jason X, X, that so. they just don't want to use the Friday the 13th, or they can't use the Friday the 13th. I don't know. I haven't got an hmm. answer to that. Hmm. Um, but, uh, but I know Paramount does own, uh, they own the movie that they made. Were you happy with the, uh, the box set? You know, I, I'm happy they did a box set. I mean, could they have done more? They could have done more. And, and you know, they were... Um, I know the people were, who were doing the extras, they were... 
putting together that extra video that that went on, and I thought that they could have. I thought it would have been better for the fans if they had tried harder to get some commentary. Yeah. I think the, you know, I mean, the 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 that extra disc is fine, but I think co- I think everybody would have liked the commentaries they had, and their only reason um, we got to do the commentary for part three is that I knew. Um, like I'm Pete Brackey's attorney. Pete Brackey wrote Crystal Lake Memories, mm-hmm. the Friday Teeth book. So the, the people doing the DVD were consulting with Pete, and I said, Pete, you know, we got to do a commentary. You know, let's let them. So we called the people doing the DVD and said, Hey, can we do a commentary? And they said, Sure. So you know, I call up Brooker and I call Dana and I call Paul and said, You know. Hey, we can do a commentary if you know if you get together. There's no you know no money, but you know this is your chance. And you know everybody's like, okay, you know let's <laughs> let's do it. So so we got together and did it, and and it, the day like but that was like whatever. Then Paramount said, okay, that's that's it. We can't. We need everything locked for legal purposes. I mean, this was back in March. Mo- the movie wasn't coming out. The set wasn't coming out. I think until September, October. But they wouldn't let anybody do any more. But after that, I heard that, like, uh, you know, we talked to Adrian King, and she said, "Oh, I would have done a, a commentary," and, and I'm sure right. they could have asked the other cast. And, yeah, actors are such, you know, egomaniacs, <laughs> especially <laughs> horror, horror actors who don't act anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there's really no no better career killer than being in a Friday the Teeth movie. <laughs> but uh, you know, other than Kevin Bacon, but. Oh. Uh, uh, so everyone, I think, if they had asked, would have done one. I mean, they ended up doing, you know, they had uh, uh, Tom McLaughlin did a great one on part six, and uh, and Kane uh, and John Beekler did mm-hmm. one on seven, yeah. and, and director and eight. But I think they could, they could, if they had asked the cast, they would, everyone would have done it. I, yeah. I had, I had no question. So I would have, I would have liked to hear the other cast doing the commentary. Mm-hmm. But I was glad I got to do the commentary, you know. Yeah. One, as a DVD fan, I'm always a big fan of all the commentary tracks on the DVD. I was kind of uh, disappointed that there wasn't one on each uh, movie. Yeah. You got a question, uh, John? Uh, just uh, to start out, uh, how did you get the part for Friday 13, Part 3? Uh, well, this, uh, you know, the story I think has become a, a legendary. I was, <laughs> uh, you know, I was uh, 18 years old, and, and you know, you see me in the movie you know that's exactly what i look like i was fat and had that afro and <laughs> big geek and uh, i had this job uh, uh handing out uh, you know movie passes you know here in la we have uh, screenings so people can judge you know early movie reviews uh, so the public can see it and it was a screening of road warrior and i was out in westwood handing out tickets and just standing there and uh, two people approached me and they said uh, Hey, are you an actor? And uh, you know, I was I was an actor. I mean, I was I was a theater major in college, and I was I was acting all through high school, and I was trying to be a professional actor. And, and they said, "Are you an actor?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Well, we were a movie, and and we think you'd be perfect." And it was uh, Marty Katraster and uh, Carol Watson who wrote the movie, and they saw me, and they went, "You know, that's Shelley." And you know, and. Um, so I gave him my name. I gave him my agent's uh, number, and, and a couple of days later, I got a call and they could come on down, and I auditioned. And I, it didn't give me the part, but you know, they got me. It got me the audition, and right. it, it, you know, it just happened. I mean, if you you read the when I read the script, you know, it it was like if my best friend had had said, you know, written a part for me, you know, because it was just like so described, you know, that. Mm-hmm. Afro geek, you know, it was just practical <laughs> joker. It was, you know, it was me. I mean, it was, you know, it was, so. Um, well, when did you lose the afro? Part. So it was sort of, you know, there was like, in Hollywood, you can be the beautiful girl in the tight sweater on the on in the in Schwabs, and you can be the fat geek, and either way, you get the part in the movie. Right. Uh, when did you lose the afro? I slept with, the, with everyone. Oh man. Oh, we gotta get the dirt on this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when did you lose the afro? When did I lose it? Yeah. Uh, you know, if I if I uh, if I I could probably still grow it a little bit, but right. uh, you know, uh, it's not a style I, anymore. I think uh, after after college, when I uh, when I lost the weight, I sort of just, uh, started brushing my hair back again. But uh, I used to like I used to have a like pick my hair out. I'd blow it. 
<laughs> and, and pick it. I had like in my um, in junior high school, which was it was about half black and half white. I had the biggest afro in in, in the school. I mean, that that was saying something. <laughs> uh, were you a fan of the series? Seventies. I mean, it was. A, I had a big pro. Right. Uh, were you a fan of the series before you uh, got the role? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I've seen, you know, the first one. I don't think I've seen the second one. Um, the second one probably just come out. Um, but it, it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't like, it was, you know, it was just a movie the, for the first one. Um, there wasn't a big, you know, it did okay. It wasn't like this huge phenomenon at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was more a Romero fan. Oh, cool. Okay. But I was happy, you know, fuck, I was happy to be in the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You have a question, Jerome? Adam Green, the director of Hatchet, he has a question. He wants to know, why did the kids take Shelley along when nobody liked him in the first place? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I reject that question. <laughs> I don't think uh, <laughs> they didn't like it. Look, in, 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 in the movie... Um, it's set up that uh, uh, Shelley is um, uh, the roommate of um, Jeffrey Rogers' character. Mm-hmm. I forgot his name. Um, but he says, "You're my roommate, and I like you." He says, right. "I like you." So uh, I don't know where uh, why Adam uh, thinks so. Much. <laughs> so uh, you know, so I'm the roommate of uh, Jeffrey Rogers' character, and 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 Jeff is. Uh, dating uh, Debbie and Debbie is best friends with Chris and then Vera is just the blind date and uh, and where the stoners where Chuck and Chili came from that's really not described like how did these two guys get in because they're like older and yeah. they're in a different place you know um, uh, speaking of uh, do you think if it wasn't like uh, for Jason and like uh, killing you guys do you think um, Shelley would have eventually scored with Vera Yes, it's starting to win it over. Fat, geeky guys often get the beautiful, <laughs> uh, hot uh, girl. It, uh, it happens all the time. Oh, well, that makes us feel better. Enjoy Although I got to say, look, uh, in, in my real life, I'm, I'm married. Uh, you know, I'm a woman who's uh, just as beautiful as uh, as Vera. Oh, well, that's uh, good. So, Thanks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you have to you have to change, but there's still hope for all you geeky guys out there. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, you, you know. It, it helps if you're uh, well endowed, but otherwise, uh, <laughs> those things uh, those things are good. Oh, okay, cool. There's That's what you, you got. <laughs> I know you guys haven't had sex yet, but when you do, <laughs> there's hope. <laughs> well, I hope so. I just turned thirty. <laughs> you know, question, John. Uh, let's see. Uh, are you looking forward to the movie Hatchet? Since I just asked Adam Green question. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to see it. They're, ha- they're having a, a screening next week at uh, uh, LA Screen Fest. And uh, see about uh, going. You know, I, when you know people, I mean, now I, I met Adam uh, actually a couple weeks ago. He's a very nice guy. And I know Kane, of course. Mm-hmm. I met him at various conventions. And I met John Beekler, uh, uh a couple times. So, yeah. What are your and thoughts on. Think about it. What are your thoughts Sorry? on uh, modern day ho- horror movies? Well, I, you know, there's there's sort of a, a, a split between, you know, there's some really good ones as always, and, and some really bad ones. The 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 eighth or other than the first ring, I don't think is is I'm not loving. I really like the first ring. Mm-hmm. The now we're, we're seeing a lot more, you know, zombie movies, um, which for the most part have been pretty good. Uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake was was really good. Um, Twenty days later was for the first two thirds was good. I, I actually, yeah, I agree with you on that one. I think the end when they go to the uh, the military base, it, it kind of lost me. Yeah, yeah, but the, but the premise was was great, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and Land of the Dead was okay. I'm 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 looking forward to doing the the the, the remake of Day of the Dead, which uh, just finished filming, and. Uh, Steve Miner, who directed uh, Part Three, is, is directing that, mm. and uh, Jeff Reddick, who's a friend of mine, who wrote Final Destination, wrote that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. Uh, you know, and then there's all these, you know, the the PG-13 thing. You know, the 
that's not working too well. Right. Um, but it's all now this whole thing about let's remake every old <laughs> right. every horror movie from the seventies. I mean, it, it, I, I understand why they do it. I mean, because they, they make money, but it, I don't think they've made good movies out of them. Mm-hmm. Have you heard anything oh, about? Oh God! It, I mean, it's just sort of pointless. Mm-hmm. Have you heard anything about the uh, new Friday Thirteenth? Because um, they're not sure if it's a remake or if it's just a retelling of of the original. Yeah, that's all I've heard. It's a you know reimagining. Right. Um, I guess remake's so, a bad word. So. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a remake. I mean, I don't think they can they, they can do it where the guys because I I think Jason's going to be in it, and then Jason's not really in the first one. So mm-hmm. I think they're going to go back and and I don't know whether they're going to reimagine how he gets the hockey mask, but <laughs> you know that no one's talking to me about this. So no right. one has my opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I know at one point they were. They did want to do another, you know, part part eleven, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, I heard they were going to do part eleven, and then they were going to do Freddy versus Jason two, but now they're doing the the, the they're going to do the reimagining first, and I mean, but maybe you need to do that to to take out, you know, take away from the Uber Jason, who's, you know, I, I think they sort of lost it with that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, after part. Uh, Not to, yeah, when he comes back in like part six. Yeah, I mean, we're, and and especially you know, Jason goes to hell, which is just sort of. <laughs> I mean, my favorite scene in the movie is when he eats the, the heart. heart. First, the first ten minutes are, are maybe the best ten minutes of any Friday Thirteenth. Oh, when you blow him up, yeah. Yeah, there's well, I was like, oh, that's great, you know, but uh, but that's just bad. <laughs> and then and Jason X, you know, I, I thought he had some great ideas uh, in the movie, but um, he just. But uh, this Jason, who you just can't, who has, no, who's just invulnerable. Mm-hmm. It, it's just sort of boring. Yeah. So, do you think Jason's like? Uh, I guess you think Jason's better when he's more like a, you know, he was uh, mortal. He was like a, just a deranged guy instead of like the yeah. undead zombie. I think that's scarier. Yeah. I mean, when they're when they when you just shoot them and they don't slow down, then it's it, I don't know. It just takes away the any kind of tension. Yeah, definitely. I get a question, uh, John. Uh, all fans remember you as the character who gave Jason the mask. Does it make you proud knowing that? <clears throat> uh, it, you know, it's really nice that uh, you know I have something um, uh, like that. You know, I didn't really have much of an acting career, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I, I so that I have something that that you know. It, here we are. We're going on twenty five years, and. People still talk about it, and still people say, you know, you get Jason the mask. And I mean, it's better than than nothing. I mean, it's nice to have a little part in film history, you know. You think if uh, Shelley was wearing a scuba mask in that scene, uh, the character wouldn't have uh, taken off as big as it did the Jason character? No, I think people would have laughed. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just I, I, that was never uh, an option. <laughs> scuba mask. That would have been stupid. <laughs> do you do you know who came up with the idea for the hockey mask? Because in the script it just says uh, Shelley's white mask. Yeah, I, 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 I. Everyone sort of takes credit for it over the years. I've heard I've heard Steve Miner take credit, and I've heard Marty take credit. Um, and you know, I wasn't <laughs> in those conversations. It, it's interesting because in the begin at the beginning of the movie. Shelly has another mask, that clear mask mm-hmm. that he wears. So I don't know if they were, if they when they started, they were thinking that was going to be the mask, and then they just went, well, that just doesn't work, and 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 then they went, okay, we'll do the hockey mask. I, but I mean, it's it's you know, it's, it's some of the stuff just doesn't make sense because you go, so Shelly brought two <laughs> up to Crystal Lake that uh, weekend, along with the spear gun and the wetsuit and. Um, you know, in that little box of his, you know, right. <laughs> he really sold uh, one of the masks. Uh, I, I, you know, it's kind of funny. You know, but, but you don't look for a lot of uh, logic in these movies. Right, right. I think we're uh, overthinking everything. Um, did you get to keep any props from the movie? I did. I got the, the fake axe, cool. which uh, when Shelley pops out of the cabinet in the middle of the movie. Um, okay. And uh, I and I asked uh, 
the, the, the special effects guy uh, if I can have that, and he gave that to me. So that's the it's, it's uh, at my home in my office and on a little pedestal. And, uh, and, you know, one <laughs> thing I got. Was there any reason, like, given to you why uh, they don't show Shelley's death on screen? Well, I think that you know, reading the script, it's it's you're supposed to because he does the fake death earlier, and then later you're. I, I guess you're supposed to the idea was that you would go is this another fake death you know is he joking again mm-hmm. uh, so if you showed it you would know he wasn't I think that was what they were right. thinking although obviously at that point since we've already seen Jason kill Vera and um, there's no, no one there's not really any tension there like, like Shelley's playing another joke Mm-hmm. So they could have shown it, uh, yeah. but it, it was just never. It was never. It was always written in that way. They never. Uh, we're, ne- we're never going to show the scene in the barn. Yeah, uh, they, they could have wrote it that Shelley was uh, was just faking that too, just so he could get away from Jason. Maybe you could pop up in some of the sequels. It, I mean, you know, the one thing about part three, if you <laughs> analyze it at all, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, is that it's not a movie where people like. Go! Oh, there's a killer! I'm gonna run! I'm gonna run! You know, I'm gonna do something stupid. Nobody knows until until Chris at the end. Mm-hmm. Everyone dies without knowing there's a killer around. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at the kills, he just like he comes out and and and, and Vera's out getting the wallet, and he shoots her, and she's dead, and he doesn't. She doesn't. That's the first you've seen her. Mm-hmm. Shelley had walked into the barn and got his throat cut. He hadn't any chance to, so he didn't walk. He didn't know there was some killer in the barn. There was no nothing, you know. There was no reason for him to be scared of going in the barn. Same with uh, everyone else. They they walk two places, but nobody nobody knows that anyone else has died until Chris at the end, uh, you know, sees the I think the bloody bath uh, uh, bathrobe. Right. But until then, nobody's uh, doing that. And now I completely forgot what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, too. I don't think there's anything important. <laughs> this is pretty much, um, you know, Shelley could have uh, just faked his death there. Maybe you could pop up in one of the, uh, the new sequels. Oh, well, that's what, so that, that was why he couldn't fake his death. He didn't know right, there was right. anything, there, any reason to fake his death. Right, so right. He didn't know there was Jason was there. Oh, okay. Uh, one of our fans, uh, Norrin Rad, he wants to know... Um, uh, do you wish Paramount would uh, release a 3D version of the uh, film on DVD? You know, I don't think the technology is there um, to release it on, you know, 3D in home video. I mean, I, I've i never seen, I know there's parts of uh, uh, Freddy's Dead that's in 3D, mm-hmm. but they just don't, they don't I think, release I think that's Freddy Vision. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't work yet. And so I, I don't think there's any uh, chance of it happening. Although, I would encourage everyone who, um, if you have not seen the movie in 3D and there's a theater near you playing it, mm-hmm. I would really encourage you um, to go see it. Because the movie on DVD is, is not, it's not very good. Um, a lot of it, because a lot of the shots just don't make any sense, because there's all these 3D shots. Right. The stuff sticking into the camera for no reason. Right, but when you see it in 3D, it's a lot of fun. I mean, and, and last time I saw it was um, in, uh, four years ago. They had a screening in L.A., and that was really the only screening they've had in, in 20, since the movie came out uh, in L.A. in 3D. And, and seeing it again with an audience and watching the 3D, it reminded me, it's just it's a lot of fun. And, and, and I, it, I know this... We're, we're taping this at uh, tomorrow's Friday 13th, mm-hmm. and if people are listening, there are screenings in tomorrow in San Francisco and in Austin and in Dallas and a couple other places. And uh, so if you can go check it out, um, I really, if you haven't seen it in 3D, it, it, it's well worth it. It, it, it. If it goes from one of the, not one of the best to, I think, I think really the, the, the best movie, if you see it in the theater in mm-hmm. 3D, it's, it's a lot of fun. Do you think there's a lot of difference uh, watching a movie at home and watching it in a theater with people? Yeah. Not just, you know, 3D, just it's any movie. Especially horror movies, but a yeah. 3D movie is just... To, to, that's where it's even a better, bigger 
you know, uh, thrilled because some of this, it's, it's because everyone is yelling and, 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 and affected. And, and, you know, when the, when, when the spear comes out of the eyeball and the eyeball pops out, it's just, uh, it's a great effect. I remember, uh, when the movie came out and I, you know, we had, I, I was done from the movie then, so I didn't see that in filming that and I wasn't really even, you know, didn't even know it was going to happen. And then you see it and, in the theater, and the whole theater just screamed. It was just a great effect, and the film was yeah. a great effect. Oh yeah, the, the eyeball popping. But but all the stuff that in the beginning that the there's a rat and a snake, and it's so lame on DVD. But in the theater, it it works, and it makes the movie just so much fun. Mm -hmm. You have a question, John? Um, uh, Scott Goldberg. He has a question. He's a film director. Any plans okay. to return to film? Do I have plans to return to film? Mm -hmm. I have no plans to return to film. I'm, uh, you know, the, uh, I'm, you know, it's hard when you're a lawyer. It's hard to do something else. I mean, if if uh, something came up and and I, you know, it worked in my schedule, I I, I think about it. But it, to be a professional actor is is really to spend all your time trying to get um, work. You have to you have to really be focused on getting work. You, you can't really do it uh, and do something else. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you think you'd be up for like a cameo in like one of the uh, Friday Thirteenth movies that New Line produces? Sure. I'd, I'd love that, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> Any uh, plans get to uh, go back into juggling? <laughs> <laughs> if there was money to be made on the professional <laughs> juggling circuit, right. I'd be right there. Uh, when did you decide to uh, pursue law and get away from acting? It's, it's, it's hard to make a living as an actor. It's very hard. And mm -hmm. I saw a lot of actors, much better than me, much more talented, you know, struggling. And, and you go to auditions and you see guys who, you know, have been around a, longer than you and, and they're on the same audition and they're just trying to get that, you know, that one day role. And I just said, that's not the future I want. So, um, I, you know, I, I went to law school. I, I wasn't sure what was going to what was going to happen at law school, but I really liked law school. I really had a great time uh, at law school, and uh, and I really liked being a lawyer. I have a good time, and I have great clients, and um, it's a lot of fun. Cool. Well, uh, we really appreciate you coming on uh, today. Anything you'd want to tell all the uh, Shelley fans out there before we let you go? Well, it's, I, 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 I'm so uh, humbled and, and sort of, you know, grateful that, you know, people like the role and, and, and people still like the movies and I went to uh, Monster Mania last month in Cherry Hill and mm -hmm. you know thousands of people there and, and, and there's still a lot of people you know come up and they say yeah they love the movie and uh, it's, it's really nice um, and I you know I gotta say it, 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 if you if you ever see any of us four people you know don't be shy about going up and talking to them they they all they all love talking about it and, mm -hmm. and nobody's gonna uh, um, you know, everyone loves being in the movie. And we all we all were really humbled. I mean, you know, I went to that Terry Hill. They had um, we had like uh, I think sixteen or seventeen of the Friday Thirteenth uh, cast members. All the Jasons were there, and all the girls, and and we're all, we're all amazed that 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 at the amount of you know love that the series gets. And, mm -hmm. and you meet people who've seen the movies over and over, and and, and it's, it's it's nice. I mean, it's a little twisted and disturbed if you don't like <laughs> right. these movies over and over again but uh, but but you know we, we like the attention so it's I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that and it's uh, it's, it's been great mm -hmm. well thanks man really appreciate you coming on hey guys this is Tom Matthews and you're listening to withoutyourhead.com stay tuned